Welcome back, everyone, to the Zero K Grand Finale 1v1 Tournament. This is the Grand Finals, despite what the bottom says. Grand Finals, Game 1 is on Intersection, because that's how Finals are working today. We're starting on Intersection, going on to the loser's pick, and we have... Game 1 is time to joke. I can't remember how games work. Okay, sorry. I You're right, it is Titan Duel. What am I thinking? I know how to run a tournament stream! Seriously, though, we yeah, we do have Titan Duel. We had Bronze Match just before, which was Anarchid versus Steel Blue, and Anarchid took it 2-0. And... We have a Finals with Titan Duel. I am Dominic, or Shadow Fury. I'm joined with Google Frog, and we're watching Drone and Gota go at it Rover v Rover. Drone, go to starting out with early Mason. Drone starting out with early oh, God, Dart. Nice the greedy one this time. Very slightly. Drone's also being fairly greedy. They only have the one Dart, but that's basically still just that and Mason. Getting early Dart is quite good. Sorry, Shaman. Yeah, sorry, everyone. That was wrong map. Shaman's apparently freaking out because I named the wrong map. It's like... Intersection's a craggy Mesa map, right? No, that's Intersection. Anyway, moving on. We have... Well, we have that Dark coming in here from Drone. It's going to be dealing a bit of damage. Not sure if it's going to be able to actually get rid of this in time. So, you know, Score should be able to defend that. Same time, Gota, Gota not managing to really do much with their own Dart. So, overall, scouting all around. Not a whole lot of damage dealt. We should have a pretty good long-ish game. I do expect these games to take about 20-30 minutes each. So... Do get your popcorn. Make sure you've gone to the bathroom. Or have water. Or otherwise, have already sat yourself in comfortably. They're pretty even. They are right now pretty even indeed. It looks like we're Drone going seeing... for more masons. Yeah, Ready which is typical. More. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, the difference between Drone and Gorda is more just that Drone is a little bit more focused on getting expansions as quickly as possible. Gold is a little bit more focused on keeping units alive. So I expect to see that Drone will have worse attrition than Gota, but will have a much stronger economy overall. So if Gota gets a stronger economy than Drone, Gota is going to be in a really good position. If Drone starts getting a much better attrition, then Drone's probably winning. It's not holding so far. I mean, you're... Well, I don't know. Gota's actually... Get Drone only has better good. economy in the sense that he's... Uh, actually... No, there's two Masons on each side. Yeah, no, at this point, Gota might be actually gonna... Gota has a stronger economy right now and seems to be getting an economy growth that's rivaling Drone, so... Yeah, Gota's doing alright, but at the same time, Drone actually is... His choice of the jump commander means he's been expanding faster. Yeah, that's something I've been noticing a lot, is taking jump like I've been taking the jump con myself a lot recently and I do find it does help Part, partly because of the jump and partly just because you can use that to escape if he's getting attacked I mean Gota can just jump yeah. into one of the holes they didn't even have to dig it themselves they, there are free holes on Titan Duel to jump a commander into it's great he is eking ahead less okay. energy though less energy but that's not too hard to deal with. I think we're going to be seeing a couple more wind gens in the main base to help deal with that. Although a bit risky going for the wind gens. I mean, this map's not bad for wind, but it's not great. Drone could, or Gota could very well end up accessing just because of that wind not working out as well as it otherwise would. Well, on average, it's good, and it's got a large storage. Yes. Relative to, relative to his income, so it should work out. Yeah, at this stage in the game, it should be fine. Now, I expect... Gota will be building a bit more energy as the game progresses. But, I mean, look at the map control, though. Gota already taking quite a bit more of the map than Drone managing to. Like, Gota just pressuring on all sides, making sure Drone can't really comfortably expand anywhere. So, Gota, as you know, Drone instead, just building a lot of defenses. Gota getting a decent amount of defenses, but I think a large part of it is that Drone is going for more energy. Gota is kind of getting away with that low energy for now. Finally getting the wind generators, but man, they Gota is playing it very dangerous when it comes to how quickly they build their wind. Or build power in general. Still working, though. It's working more efficiently, I think. 
I think go Drone's gonna probably want to go for some a little bit more of a tricky expansion, like very an expansion. There, tricky, tricky raid. If Drone can manage to get in with a good raid, get rid of some of Gold's economy and take that economic advantage, then they're gonna be in a reasonably decent spot. And they do actually manage to get a metal extractor right here on the eastern side of the map. But the Mason does get away, and there's not a whole lot else to deal with. Same I think thing. Gunner might have gone in too deep up here. Maybe I don't know. Check out Mason for what might be free. Commander, not free, but it's gonna be dead anyway. Oh, oh wow! Sixty-three health left on that commander. I, that was close. I, I noticed there. It looked like one of the scores was actually retargeted at the very last second. Like wasn't just targeting the commander, but at the same I time, I think one of the scores just got pushed. It might have too. Now, yeah, course, that would make sense. God is gonna try and dive it. No, I don't know. It looks like Gota's being a bit careful. They're getting rid of some no, of the look, forces he's going that in. locked it. Oh, they are? Okay, yeah, you're right. For a second, I thought they weren't, because I thought they go, nope, it's too much, it's too risky. Though. Probably not. Oh, Ooh, no! It it's slightly. Not enough, though. Drone really should have moved back there. I don't know. I, I kind of like the way Drone's gone with this. They're still in a reasonably good position. Very still slightly, one though. caretaker. Very yeah. slightly back. But, hey, it worked out. They got the Lotuses, and that was enough. That being said... Gorda is actually quite a bit behind economically now, thanks to the reclaim that Drone has to work with. And Drone has quite a bit of reclaim to work with. They've got 300 metal reclaim to work with, He's also pushing so. fences to try and counter the central pushing. Yes, very good choice there. Actually, Gorda's commander in a bit of an iffy spot as a result, though. I don't think they care. They're just Gorda, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're just walking into the fencers. Don't even care. That works. Doesn't even care. They're just intimidating the fencers into running away. All they need to do. It's like... Finding a bear and just walking up to it, the arms spread out, going, come fight me, and then the bear walks away. It's basically what happened. He had scorches too. Oh, that too. Yeah, okay, it helps when you have those. Okay, so it's like if God, a bear comes at you, ahead. you walk at it with your arms out, and there's a division of tanks behind you. That, a little more threatening. Still, though, the fencers are a bit of a problem, and... I like Gota's harassment, but it's... I'm not sure it's going to be working out attrition-wise. Like, Drone is winning the attrition game, and Gota's kind of winning the economy game. So right now, I'd say it's overall even, but it's more a matter of can Gota hold on to some of the expansions they've been building up, and the fencers clearly are trying to make sure the answer to that question is no. The Ravages might be able to deal with it. There's a lot of fences. There are a lot of fences. They can run away. I don't know, the Ravager's clearly doing a good job just tanking it out, allowing the Scorches to get in, deal some damage. Nice timing on the Scorches from Gota, too, to help help those Fencers out, provide a bit of support. Push the Fencers, or sorry, help the Ravagers out, rather. Provide that bit of support while the Ravagers go into the Fencers. Fencers should still take out the Ravagers, but eh, at the very least, it does open things up a little bit. Still, that's no man's land now. Gota's Commander, I'm kind of surprised they aren't just retreating. Jump, jump into the, there we go, jump out of there. Get safe. That'll work. That's like Gota's actually economy. lost more, but also produced more. Yeah, Gota's economy has been, wow, considerably better than Drone's. Like, four base metal per second, but also pretty good reclaim approach. That being said, Drone is going to manage to get his entire central reclaim field, like, a thousand metal. Gota going for a counterattack might be able to dart out these fencers, but it's tough to call. It's really going to come down to the positioning in the fight. And he has not got, not got himself it. some ravages which are useful against the fences which are sort of outliving the usefulness. Indeed, the ravages do they do tank the fencers nicely. And of course, but this is all happening on the top right of the map, giving drone space to just make it expand the bottom left. Yeah, at the same time also harassing the top right because there's not much that Gorda has that's in position to stop it. And moving the fences around, I mean drone's doing a really good job multitasking across the map just to slow Gorda down. Gorda's dealing with it more or less, but taking a lot of losses in the process. And this actual, this, this western side, I mean, you can see the fences going in, breaking, breaking the Lotus over to the south side of the map, and they basically have a clear shot in the main base. Well, they're a bit slow for that against the force, but yeah, yeah but they're opening up the scorches. So at this point, Drone winning the economy game and winning the attrition game, so Drone, I would say, is ahead. That is a Gota. big army of Scorches, though. That is a big army of Scorches. It might be able to turn this around. If it gets rid of the Fencers, that opens things up massively, and it does. Going again for the Lotuses, 
bit of a risky move with the way this is so small, but does get rid of the Lotus is more than enough to help get rid of this entire expansion. Drone has moved the commander quite a bit south and might be cut off now. If Gota successfully manages to get rid of this firebase over to the south side of the western side of the map, there's nothing there's going to be able to reinforce to save their commander if the commander gets attacked. His masons are plopping turrets fast enough, though. No, no, no. But meanwhile, the Ravagers have been doing things. Yeah, the Masons are helping. The Ravagers are doing more, though. Scorchers go down, and with that... No, no, Scorchers still up. Drones, Scorchers, however, getting rid of the Ravagers, so that's going to be enough to stop it. At the same time, Goldie coming back in here might be able to get rid of some of the Masons. Granted, Drones got so much reclaim. This is the biggest thing. If these Masons go down, that is a lot of reclaim that is not being taken. But unfortunately, the Masons were not targeted, so the Scorchers just fired at Drone Scorchers with no effect. So Drone ending up ahead thanks to that last little bit of micro, but Gota, on the other hand, managed to get a little bit of a position. Not a great position, but something of a position. While also breaking the center. So Drone can't really control the center as easily anymore. They didn't lose much in their main base, but the center is still now more contested. And actually, maybe wrapping around, Drone might be able, or Gota might be able to wrap around and take the commander. Possibly, Stardust there's a Stardust, Stardust there. Yeah, there's two Stardusts Two there. Stardusts. He released feared those scorches. I can't blame him. I mean, half a dozen scorches, that commander is dead. So, I like the Stardusts. It's a good choice. In fact, it's going to need something like Impalers and maybe Fencers to get rid of it. Fencers probably would do the trick. But, Goda can't really afford to split their forces that way. No. Oh, Drone's the one with the forces. Exactly. Drone has Drone has an army advantage right now. Goda trying to deal with that, but Drone just ending up with Stardust to make sure the scorches cannot go around wherever they'd like. And I like that. That's that's a really smart choice from Drone. I mean, at this point, again, Drone's winning on attrition. And like I said, if Drone's winning on attrition, that's a really good sign for Drone. And if Drone's, if Drone's losing on economy, it's kind of been back and forth. I mean, if you look at overall metal produced, metal used, it's about the same. Gold is a little bit behind right now. I mean, metal income is better for Gold right now, but it's all over the place. And the attrition's Gota's dead even. Attrition is dead even. Gota is slightly ahead in army value, not by much. I think a lot of it is just the cost of fencer relative to the cost of Scorcher. The extra 10 metal per or the extra 10 metal is... Maybe, I don't know. It, I mean, it's a bit risky because, again, we've already seen how fencers can be wrecked by a large army of Scorchers. But then again, uh, Ripper's coming needs in here. some Ravages, over, which he's getting. Yep, and Rippers as well. More for the Scorchers than anything, but still, it's there. Rippers can yeah. be quite good in Ravager battles. Mix a few in. Yeah, just nice flash damage. Although at the same time, the defensers coming in here, those are getting rid of the Stardust. And that was the that's the big problem for Golda right now for mobility, is the Stardust getting rid of the Scorchers. I mean, at the same time, Golda can't really build up their own defenses thanks to defensers. But that's more of a question of, can these defenses from Golda come in here, get rid of the Stardust, and expose Drone's commander? It that is like a problem, gonna... but I think Golda is being reconnected. Sorry, Drone is being reconnected, killing... Got his little turret expansion to the left. Yeah, they're certainly trying to. That's that's clearly Drone's mission right now is to reconnect to the bottom, to the southwest of the map. And Drone might be able to do that. Gota is getting pushed back. They don't really have the forces here. They split a bunch of fences over to the south side of the map to get rid of the Stardust. But unfortunately, there's not a whole lot helping get rid of the fences over to the north side of the map. Or or that Ripper. Especially that Ripper. Gota's command is quite vulnerable too. Uh, it still has its jump off cooldown, but it's it, it might does. not be enough. Not with the Ravagers coming in here. That's those Ravagers they've got the reconnect. Low health Ravagers though. They are, but the reconnect has still been secured, or reasonably secured. I, a Lotus or two not will do it. Not super secure. It's no man's land again. That's an improvement. It's an improvement in Drone's favor. But yeah, Golda definitely making sure that's contested. Uh, I think Drone loses his commander now. Oh, maybe. I don't know, that Stinger's being a bit of a problem. But no, the Scorchers come in here. Yep, Drone loses their commander. There's nothing here to stop that. Commander Needs goes down, Stinger's... Eh, no time to do so. Drone losing their commander is a reasonably big blow, but they had the, they had the storage up. They have plenty of reclaim coming in here. But without the reclaim, Drone well, just doesn't have a lot they, of economy. They don't have a construction down there anymore. It's a big problem. Right, yes, that is always the problem. Of course, I don't see Gota taking that area at all by Constructor for another five minutes or so. Oh, Faraday, nice. I haven't really seen Faraday in high level play. I feel like it's a little underrated, Seems but I like it's used here. Yeah, it's great. It's just you don't see it much, I think, because 
you can see a lot of Lotus and Pickett, and people don't want to think of Faraday. But with follow-up, yeah, Faraday does a great job. I mean, look at the amount of value Gold has gotten just off the Faradays, keeping their keeping everything done. Like two Scorchers with a couple Faradays have wiped out half a dozen Scorchers and a couple Ravagers from Drone. So yeah. Good use case for Faradays. Good good demonstration. It's why Faradays work. Even though people never use them. Well, and not never. I mean, it's something I see fairly often at low-level play. It's just, I hadn't seen it much at high-level play. Of course, that being said, Drone's still getting more of the Reclaim than Golda. Golda could really use more Caretakers. Probably another factory, actually. I think at this point, even with the Caretakers they have, they aren't actually building... Un like, units are taking too long to run off the platform that Golda's still accessing. Yeah. Could get more expensive units. Yeah, it's just... That's an option. But what would you really get, though? I mean, Impalers? Dominatrices? Surely Dominus Ravage might be okay. expensive enough. Yeah, okay, fair enough. 250 would probably be fine at 50 metal per second. I'm a little surprised we aren't seeing that, actually. In fact, Drone actually has the army advantage now, I'd say. Yeah. Mostly by type, yeah. It's the, the fencers coming in are wiping all the defenses. Uh, about twice as much by cost as well. Is it? Oh, you're right. Yeah, definitely is twice as much by cost. 3,000 metal to 1,500. Yeah, like I said, that's why I didn't expect Golda to take that southwest side. Drone can't retake it, but Golda isn't going to take it back, so ultimately Golda's still kind of holding on more than anything. I think Drone needs to plop some defenses with all his masons, then consolidate yep. this and push in. They got Stardust. That's a start. It's a good start, too. Golda doesn't have that many fencers. Actually, that could do the trick, but there are enough fencers that Golda's still managing to get value here. It's just a matter of reclaim. Though now that Gold has repaired the commander, they should be able to get the reclaim back on. Pretty soon. Drone priority that a little bit more, but these masons are in a bad spot. There's none of the fencers can nothing to stop the fencers here. No stingers or anything. So these masons are forced to retreat the reclaim field again, going to no one. And Golda with the scorchers to help defend the fencers. I, mean, I like the way Scorch Golda is microing this out. They are gradually winning the attrition battle. Even if they're kind of having a hard Double time. Double air. Planes for both. Oh, yep. There's the plane plant. It's pretty much the same timing for each. Drone's a little bit faster on it, though. And we've got and Ravens. Thund Oof. Ravens Instead for drone. of Thunderbirds. Well, Raven for Drone, Thunderbird for Golda. So Golda's got the Thunderbirds. I can see that. Wipe out a all these Scorchers. Like, just stun them out. Or stun out the Stardust and then run in. Although the fences are going to be fine talking about those. Which makes some sense, although the Faraday is pretty good against Ravens. Yeah, Faraday Stinger combo might be a problem here. Ooh. I don't know. It's moved away from the Faraday, so maybe not. Nice nice walk dodge from Gota, though. Faraday's First pass pretty good. Does nothing. Yeah, Faraday did a great job. First pass does nothing with the Ravens. A couple of Swiss coming in here from Gota to help deal with this. And the Thunderbird. There's Gota's Thunderbird. Coming in, taking out the Stardust, taking out the Stinger, taking out everything. Follow-up force coming in. Some Scorches are available for Drone, but it's not nearly drone enough, so Gota should be able to stop. Drone as well. They didn't use it, though. No, that's, that's a bit of a shame for them. Lost a lot of army and lost basically everything to connect to the bottom side of the map again. There's Drones, though. It's not really doing much yet, but there it is. It's flying around, seeing what it can do. It's actually quite a bit it could do, honestly. This entire army for the Scorchers and Ravager, or Scorchers and Fencers. Well, okay, it's not a whole lot of follow-up, but there's something. There's some follow-up. And there it is! Not much follow-up, though. It's more just no. holding back. More a defensive. A little bit. Yeah, purely defensive, just to buy time. That's all I can really do. But go to taking advantage of that to uh, just grab stuff. Darts over to the south side of the map, too, taking out everything they can. Taking out the metal extractors. The Masons, I'm assuming, going to at some point come in here and deal with them, but I don't know. Oh, maybe not. Drone coming in here with all their Scorchers. Mm. Oh, there's the defensive forces coming in here. Thankfully, so many Maces from Gota, it almost doesn't matter if they lose a half dozen. Still fine. Badger. I think okay. Drone's doing better now. Sorry, Gota is doing better. I agree. They took out the Southwest. Gota's, Gota's freed up basically three-quarters of the map for themselves. 
drone has some great reclaim going on, and that's the one thing that Golda doesn't really have right now. They don't have control of any of the reclaim fields, and they can't easily get it. Those Stardusts are being a problem, even with the Thunderbirds and Golda's side. Like, between the Razors and just the fact that there's so many Scar Stardusts, it's kind of difficult to get in there. Still, though, it looks like at this point we aren't seeing... Wow, the Ravens aren't even going for the command. They just can't really go for anything. Swifts just say no. Well, there's a lot more reclaim coming in there for Gota, at least. Say so they got something, but, man, Drone, I don't know. They're pushing hard with that defenses. I think once Gota takes the south side of the map, they're going to get the reclaim. They're going to get, oh, actually, 1,500 metal reclaim on plus 20. That is that is huge. Once Gota starts getting the southwest, they should be able to turn this around. Or really push in. Now, oh, and there's Gota running with the lightning gun. With the disarm and the de uh, defensive disarm, but it's not enough. Raptor's coming in as follow-up beyond that. So it should be okay, they're but... They're slow. should be fine. Yeah, it should be fine. But maybe a Mason or two might go down in the process. Still, though, good defensive Thunderbird coming in there from Drone. If it weren't for that, that would have been it. Gota would have been able to take out the entire army and might have been able to go past that because there's no Stardust... or one Stardust beyond that. Would have likely been dead. And with that, I don't... I don't know. Even with that, though, I think... Gota's still in such oh, a good spot. Drone Thunderbird himself. Yeah, they did. That's the reclaim down. That's most of the reclaim down, actually. They don't really have any reclaim left right now. And they're for forces are forced to go back. Stinger's able to get rid of the Stardust on top of that. And possibly get rid of the Razor. Yeah, get rid of the Razor. And the Swift's basically distracting the Razor in the, in the meantime. Stinger could take it out. That looks like it. That looks like it. Yeah, drones. Gorda's talking, taking the southwest. Drone Big has reclaim. nothing. Yeah. That is... That's game one of the grand finals. Drone will be able to pick the next map. I'm guessing Aurelian just to make it something weird. But honestly, it's up to Drone. Still, though, that was a very even match. Like, metal used almost identical. Value lost very close. Drone did end up getting more attrition in the latter half of the game. But at the beginning of the game, they were doing a great job keeping the units in. But I think the fact that metal use was even, drone was only slightly ahead, was a big reason Gold yeah, was able to get in there. No, I seem to have left the game. Well, at any rate, we're going to be moving on to game two. Is it Aurelian? Okay. It is Aurelian. I mean, it's a new map. Everyone seems to like it. I'm actually quite glad. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of C, but I think it's because there haven't been a lot of good C maps. So if there's a good C map, that's great to see the rest of the, see more of the game be playable. Well, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, you're the one who's you're probably have more skin in the game because you, of course, you're one of the you're the main designer. Yeah, more C maps are good. Aquanim mainly designed C, and that's a few true. others. So yeah, I guess right. he's trying to make maps where the design's supposed to work. Well, given the way RTS games work, it makes sense. I mean, ultimately, an RTS game does live and die by its maps. Yeah. Also, it's pretty. We need more pretty maps. Especially good for sea, though. You know, it's just water. Right. Good to make the sea pretty. Yeah, and the little bits in the bottom that apparently work for Amphbots. So that's cool. One thing I've noticed with some of the maps that have been played in C recently has been that there's a lot of shallow sections. Which makes sense. I mean, you want to make sure that Amphbots and such have some use beyond just their underwater stuff. But yeah, well, the, the gray bits here are shallow. So yep. Amphbots can fire from there. Units can actually move through there, I think. I'm not sure. I've not checked. I no one's really played Amphbots, so I don't really know. Well, Amphbots can can definitely sort of surface automatically from there and move right. around. I'm just thinking more because there's some Amphbots that are quite a few Amphbots that don't really do anything underwater. Like it's I don't know, it's one of those weird things about the factories. Like half of it's useful underwater and the other half isn't. Anyway, both players are going for ships, so it's a moot point. Unless we get Amphbots which later on. And both, okay, Corsair, Mariner for Drone, and 
cutter, cutter, a cutter scout. all day for go for Golda. Yeah, cutter's really a got a type unit. Yeah, micro heavy. A lot of stuff you can do to disable things. A lot of stuff you can do just to do little tricks with. Like a C flea dart. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Gorda was the big dagger user back in the day, so it does not surprise me. I mean, so the thing is, survival. if you make about six or seven cutters, you can disarm and kill a Corsair if it's by itself. Although, goda has gone for the more reliable Seawolf. Yeah, that makes sense. Cutter clearly just there for scouting and maybe yep. nailing him. Seawolf's made it out, so it should just deal with that problem. Yeah, it's what, four shots, I think, to get rid of Cutter? Five shots. I'm oh, sorry, six shots, because it's 1,500, effectively. Although the Cutter's well what he's doing here. with the Seawolf. I don't know. They just run right in. There's no ma there's no hunters or anything. I mean, there will be hunters very soon. Like, drones on top of that. But for now, no hunters. So, yeah, just go. Although I like the way the drones got the cutters to help, to help defend, so the cutters can't get rid of the core or can't help damage the Corsair. The hunters are coming in, though. Yeah, I won't be able to save it, but might be able to get revenge. Oh, they will be able to save it. One of the two of the torpedoes have missed. Seawolf got too close. I didn't even know that was a thing that could happen, but apparently it is. The Seawolf actually getting destroyed thanks to two missed torpedoes. Wow. I did not expect that. I, I, yeah, units which are not turrets have these problems. That's true. Yeah. I guess I just assumed it would home a little bit better, but nope, apparently not. I guess it's a torpedo. They don't really home, do they? Well, it's good to know in the future is that sea wolves can miss. You might want to be a little bit further away than right under your target. They're like puppies in that respect. Or at least they I were. Thought, yeah, because puppies, puppies home were fixed. So the thing is, like, weren't well, no, they always home? They just always fired forward. That's then right. Yeah, they often overshot. Sometimes the target. fired forward when they were too close, in the, in the same way. Yeah, and they just they're just a little rocket dance. Just keep jumping over a unit, and never actually hitting it. Kind of funny to watch, but totally worthless in military sense. Well, at any rate, after that. It's kind of evened out. Both players are going for pretty quick expansions, and I think what we were seeing before Google Frog with this is that I think it was just the players, like Dark Surround and Anarchy, weren't as used to this map. Because Drone yeah, and Godar are just going for it. No, but these two, they have they want that money. They want that medal. They aren't going to let fear get in the way. Which is good, because high-power Sealy units are pretty cool. I wonder if anyone's going to use an Envoy. Those are neat, but... Also, almost never used because they're hard to hit with. But then sometimes they are used because they're still quite useful. Ooh, kind of going around the back from drone. I, ah, oh, it's too close. The urchin does get it. Still might manage to get. Mariner is being built up. There's nothing stopping this cutter from getting rid of the metal extractor. Probably not in time, but still, damage is being dealt. So drone with the multi-pronged attack. Ah, oh, nice repairs. This cost them might even go down. I think it will. Yeah, the urchin's definitely making it go down. No. Got oh, away. Oh, so close. And there's a cutter coming in to intercept. Cutters weren't in the right position. Yeah, but there's cutters coming in to intercept it, so it will go down pretty soon. And there's cutter over in the back just doing nothing. I mean, he's tying up a mariner, so it's not nothing. That is more expansion that's not happening over to the back. But still, not really doing much. And there's Corsair down, another Corsair at least getting some value. I wonder if Goda's going to be going... I don't think Goda's going to make more Seawolves. I feel like Goda's just going to stick to Cutters and other light units like that, because I feel like at this point they're not bothering. Oh, Disarm turns out the mechs. Right, good point. Sorry, Shaman. Forgot about that. But anyways, for Goda's unit, position, unit composition, I don't see Seawolves in the cars just because that last one really didn't work. Also, Drone is winning the economic game. I mentioned before, if Drone's winning economy, that's normal. If Drone's winning attrition, that's good for Drone. Gold is kind of falling behind at this point. Oh, 
Oh, never mind, we are seeing more sea wolves. Okay. Goda hasn't completely lost faith in the sea wolf. Or maybe they just figure they have no choice. They have to go for the sea wolf sooner or later. Hmm. Good cutter use over the northeast side of the map, making it a little harder for drone to continue building up. Stopping some of the metal extractors, so at least that's something. And the defense is used to help deal with the metal extractors, or deal with the cutters. Yeah, eventually this is dying. Well, no, the Corsair is coming to save it, but it is forcing the Corsair to come and save it. And the cutters still managed to get a lot of damage in there. And disarm a couple metal extractors, so not bad. Overall, that's not bad for value. At the same time, Sea Wolves over to the south side of the map. Getting rid of the Corsairs. Just threatening everything. And that should be all the Corsairs down. Hunters coming in to try to help out, but that's what the Cutters are for. Block out the Hunters. Oof. Sea Wolf going down for basically nothing thanks to the Hunter, but still, the Hunter does go down in the process. Goda's still doing a remarkably good job, given the lack of money for building stuff up. Drone over does have 30 metal per second going on in their factory. Goda only has... Oh, getting 30 now. They should be able to really catch up, and especially given that they did go for Sea Wolves and are kind of, as a result, winning the attrition game. Should be working out okay. If, you know, they had a way of dealing with the... Well, okay, I don't know if I, don't know if I agree with Rar about the overinvestment on Cutters, though. He has managed to expand as well. That is a problem. Mostly because, like, why is this back area not and taken? has he built many that. Cutters? Oh, sorry, Corsairs? No, it's Corsairs a Seawolf Cutter. Go right through defenses and do some raiding. Yeah, Drone's kind of... Drone's in a really strong position right now. Hunter Corsair basically counters exactly what Goat is up to. I do kind of wish that Goat had expanded a little sooner, though. Like, they are getting in the back well, of the no, expansion now. Well, no, he's Corsair but, uh, get killed on the right. Yeah, but that's not the main problem, is it? The main problem is the four Corsairs and half dozen Hunters that are coming in in the center. In fact, there's not much to deal with that. It's a bunch of Cutters and a Sea Wolf, but that's not the same thing. Although Sirens, okay, not a bad choice. Um, Might be a little too, little too Corsair. late. No, it's, I think it's too little too late, but it's not a terrible option. I would kind of like to see Mistletoe, maybe honestly. That would deal with both of them. He can use it to go through the urchins, though. Probably the point. I would have liked to see some Mistrels, though. Like, get a bunch of those up. That would take care of the Corsairs, help get rid of the Hunters. Just yeah, those clean units. Up the forces. Yeah, they are units. They are useful. They do stuff. I realize Sirens were broken when C first started being Aquanim C design. They're not broken anymore, though. Sirens are actually These quite counterable. These Corsairs probably kill this army, though. Oh, yeah. Totally. Although, I kind of like the use of this... This one little sea wolf to help distract a bit, but yes, no, this isn't. This isn't really a safe setup. Oh, there's a commander. Yeah, there's Goda's commander. There's Goda's commander getting torn apart by a bunch of hunters, which the cutters are going to try to help defend, but the corsairs are going to stop that, or at least try to stop that. Not that there's enough survive, cutters. I don't know. There's like two dozen cutters. I think it might be fine. Eighteen. See, Sarin did pretty well there. Against Hunters, yeah. Which is good, because the Hunters are gone, that means the Sea Wolf can do its job. Except for all the Urchins. And Siren on the other side. That does cause problems. Oh, we've got Wait. Envoy, which is good. Hey! Wait, where? Oh, yeah! Oh, we got the Envoy. Hooray, we have Envoys! I mean, I'd rather see Mistrels right now, but Envoys are a non-unit I normally expect to see very often in Sea Games, so that's pretty cool. Well, they're excellent. They're a bit late game. Yeah, I guess. I just think... I just consider them inaccurate for some reason. But I'm probably wrong. In fact, I'm definitely wrong. It looks like they're quite accurate. So, hey, there you go. Managed to do a fair bit of damage with that. Or possibly do a fair bit of damage. I mean, that's assuming that they don't get attacked too quickly. Although, with this iron coming in, that might be fine? Not really sure what to expect here. Goat has managed to expand a fair bit, but Drone has so much more economy. Oh my goodness. Overdrive on top of Reclaim on top of having three or four more metal extractors. Goat is behind by half. Like, Goat needs to wipe out this army and start raiding right now if they want to have any chance. And it looks like they are going for the raids. Getting some Hunter Cutter around the map just to... Looks like, yeah, get rid of everything they can. Get rid of Mariners, get rid of metal extractors. Start actually taking out Drone's economy, because they have to. That is the only option Goat has. They need to 
raid with a few Corsairs to really get through the urchins. You're right, but... It's the problem. Actually, yeah, they could do that. They should do that, too, because the Corsairs aren't going to do much of... Well, they don't have any Corsairs, actually. But Corsairs wouldn't be doing a whole lot in the front lines right now. I'm not sure how much these are going to do as it is. These Corsairs are pretty much the right unit to use in this situation for drone. Same time over on the north side of the map. Everything does get stunned out. There's no defenses over here, so... I mean, Gota is slowly but surely getting rid of some of Drone's economy. It's just that it's not really slow. It's not really quick enough. Like, right now, in terms of army value, it's... It's Drone's advantage by about 1,200 metal. Cutter's Nurse is not doing a gr bad job of making that turn around, but still, it's not great. Actually, it's not bad, come to think of it. This, these Corsairs dying over the north side of the map is a fairly big blow, as well as the Metal Extractors dying over to the far north. That is giving Golda a lot of attrition advantage. Actually, enough that I think it's just evened out, or not quite evened out the army advantage. Production is making it impossible to just simply even out the army advantage, but it helps. Look at all the overdrive. Yeah, exactly. Drones just got all the overdrive in the world. If if these cutters can go around the back and start taking on the wind generators, that'll be a huge blow, but I don't see that happening. Man, it looks like Golda's going to have to try to push in somehow to the center, and I just don't see that happening. Like, this, these attacks over to the side are not doing a bad job, but I think ultimately they are going to be just... They're going to be pushed back. Two Metal Extractors did manage to survive. Or, sorry, did manage to die. There's not much more left, though. Not much more that Gota can really attack. Although with the Urchins... Oh, hey, a couple of Urchins did go down. There'd be room for some Seawolves coming in the back, but it looks like it's pretty much pure Envoy. Or Envoy Hunter Cutter. Still, though, hundreds and cutters coming up from the north side of the map. Not a whole lot's going to stop them. The envoy certainly won't. This could actually be a way of breaking through drones' defenses on a flank. There it is! The envoys have nothing defending them. There, this could be it. They've got the to attack the right things. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately they didn't, and the urchins did get rid of them, so no, it's not it. So you kind of wish Gold had gone a few more Corsairs. Yeah, I think if Gold had gone for a few more Corsairs, they would have taken out the Envoys, and that would have really helped turn things around. But at this point, Drone should be able to push in for the win. Not a lot stopping it. He's got the dream sort of Envoy army with Corsairs. Yeah, Drone does. Drone really does. Drone is the army I kind of wish we saw Google... Or, saw with, I kind of wish we saw Gota have. Or at least if Gota built some Seawolves or something to help deal with the Corsairs, that would at least be something. But none of those things are the case. And drone with the cutters in the back should be able to help get rid of basically everything, stopping a bunch of drones' expansion. Sorry, Gota's expansion, and forcing Gota back as well, splitting their army, leaving the front line counter vulnerable, which mostly is just drone doesn't care about that, going for more expansions as Gota just tries to live off reclaim. I mean, drones harassment only managed to get rid of one metal extractor, so at least it's not huge, but Frontline Assault, however, got rid of another two. Put the Corsairs into a very frontal position. Could very well have them basically get rid of everything else. Same time, though, drone just focusing heavily on building more army, building more sirens, not really focusing... And more overdrive, getting loads more overdrive. He's getting a cloaker. Yeah, getting the... Which is interesting. I guess they're expecting that Gota's going to go for air or something and would be very quickly able to see from above what the army is. Or if you sneak a Corsair cloaker army in, you know, around the south, say. Wait. Where it's unexpected. I irises are... You can just sweep over and kill it all. Oh, sheesh. I thought I didn't realize... I've never really tried Iris in the water. Yeah, it's just an amphibious unit. Cool. Oh, yeah, it uh, is. Things can't be cloaked when they're submerged, but they get jammed. Well, sorry, the water jams them when they're submerged, in effect. Yeah, right. But the thing is, most of these aren't submerged. None of these are submerged, really. Well, the iris is. Oh, yeah, so the iris would be... So there's this one iris going through that you can see, and everything else is like, what's around the iris? I don't know, but you know something's there. But you don't know yeah, where it is. if you have vision on it, because radar doesn't work underwater. Oh, yeah, of right. Of course. So it's something. It is something. Good in artillery, Jules. Actually, yeah, I come to think of it, it would be very good. 
And that's exactly what we're seeing, so we should see Drone basically go in for the final push right now. Oh, he's going for daggers as well. Surprised it could have been Halberds. Yeah, normally, isn't Halberd Claymore normally the, the thing to go for in these duels? I just rush ah, in see, now the arms can cloak because it's above water. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just one part of the map, but still, it's a central part yep. of the map. Oof. Dr I mean, Gota, they're trying to go for that other harassment. I just don't see it really working out. I mean, the Hunter's not doing a bad job, but again, it's there's not really a whole lot of commitment to anything because overall, Gota can't. What do they see anyway? Oh, okay, I see, they see the iris. They don't see anything else. Is Gota coming back? This is even army values. Drones have been oh, yeah, investing into his uh, economy. So while he has a lot more, most of its economy. Well, I say this is a timing. If Gorda can yes. get a bunch of damage off this, take out some of the economy, then that will be a huge blow, but I don't really see where they he go. He has to do it really quickly. Yeah, I have to go right now, take out like the Southwest Metal Extractors or something. And then that would be enough damage. I just don't see that happening easily because, well, what's going to actually deal that damage, right? Like, what if Gorda is actually going to go around the back and do the job? Doesn't look like anything. Irene should be going for just get five halberds, kill off all the expansions. Drone or Gorda or both? Really both, actually, although Drone. Yeah, Drone already has, has the plan. factory. Yeah, they have the upper platform, so they could right now. But yeah, at this point, it's. Like, Goda's holding on. They're getting a lot from the reclaim, and they're not managing to turn that into a massive army. And it's more like, I just don't agree with the composition, and it's getting us all killed. Though, admittedly, these hunters will be able to do some, maybe some damage to the envoys, but again, the urchins stop that. It's always the urchins stopping it. Yeah, you need force to get through the urchins. Or mistrals. Or apparently a bunch of archers. Or a bunch of, of hunters. Well, anything sort of works. Yeah, if you have enough of it. But that's oh, okay. It. See, it's sneaky decorate. Oh, there we go. Hey, it's 400's favorite strategy, except done by drone. Actually, that is really nice. There's not a whole lot of defenses coming here either. No urchins or anything. There, this is this isn't going to be it, but it's going to massively destroy Golda's production capacity. I think Killing this... the energy is really important because he's quite close. Yeah, but I'm not sure the things we have to do enough damage. Well, it's one caretaker and not really going for the factor. No, the wind farms weren't, or tidal farms rather, weren't gone for. So not a whole lot in that wave. The next wave coming in doesn't manage to do a whole lot, getting killed mostly by the lotuses over in the north northeast. So, drone lost a lot of army value on raids that didn't accomplish much. But at the same time, their economy is so much stronger. They've got double the, the army value of Gota, and that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Now the Claymore's coming in here, basically just wiping out everything. Possibly. It's all very spread out. They could wipe out the commander, though, if microed. Hmm. Uh. Well, at any rate, we... I mean, we're looking at what's likely to be Drone's game to lose, honestly. Gota's got really good attrition right now, but they, it's not going to do much. He's got no, a lot no. of envoys. True. Not that much helps. in front of it at the moment, so there could be a turnaround. But, There could be, but yeah, the envoys going to retreat to that. The envoys going to retreat into the urchins, and the Corsairs are coming up to help deal with that, so no, it's not really that vulnerable. Yeah, it's pretty safe. Like, drone's on point with that. They're, they've, they're paying attention. If the envoys get threatened, they'll just shift them back. Standard line switch. It's it's not like drone's really under much threat. Gota's... Like, I don't know what they'd really do from here. Like, they can't really build anything expensive, because they're going to lose out if they do that. But they can't keep going with the army they have, otherwise... They don't have much, and the Corsairs are going to stop any attempt to say Sea Wolves to get rid of the... Uh, get rid of the... Sorry. Clamor's going to stop the Sea Wolves to get rid of the Corsairs. Though, if they're going down quickly enough, it might just be worth going for a few sea wolves just to do that. I don't know. I just... 
don't see this army for gold working out. Don't know what they're up to. Oh, I, drones I, I, got planes. Seems yeah, I think good. Gold is just sort of trying to hang on any way they can. And drones actually pushing to win. Drones adding the complications on until God is going to fall over. Yeah, essentially. I mean, God is doing a good job holding on as it is, but I think at this point, like, God is getting so drained. I wouldn't be surprised if the next game ends up just being on a tiny map and it's just down to five minute cheese. Yeah. Although, never mind. No, Eric coming in here. God going for a bit of a switch. Getting around the same yep. time, too. Two aircraft pilots, in fact. Oh, yeah. What? what? Why? That feels like a mistake. And then everything auto-building the mistake. Blocking his base off almost entirely sounds like a bit of a mistake, too. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's... interesting. Well, at any rate, that's that's a possible way through. Thunderbird going in here, getting rid of the Corsairs might do the trick. But well, do we miss Ravens lost all of his envoys to the artillery? Yeah, to see, that's the thing I was thinking about. I was like, Not switching is a button. massive risk, and that risk I don't know if it's going to pay off. Gonna gonna come down to how much that can actually build up. Like Thunderbird's coming in here, could be able to help get rid of some of the Corsairs that have been built up, but I don't see a lot of follow-up force. And drones holding on, but I don't see a whole lot of follow-up force. So I don't know. There's enough siren um, ravens coming in to snipe a city factory. That too, yeah, that's that's a problem. Is that what he's aiming for? Well, hard uh, to I know tell. he's going for the caretakers. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean caretakers make a lot more sense anyway. It's much more cost effective to get rid of those. Although yeah, it, it interrupts more... the construction in a way that it wouldn't otherwise. Yeah, although at the same time, God has so many workers that it almost doesn't matter. Like, they basically have enough build power just off Mariners. Yeah. He's got seven Mariners there, so... That's plenty. I mean, seven and a half build power each, that's... That's six, That's 75 build... Or, that's not 75, that's... Although they're now like stuck there until they rebuild the caretakers. Well, yeah, that's true. But where and else could they go? The course is coming survive. in here. And also, of course, there's coming in here to help deal with everything else. I don't really know how much hope there is left, honestly. Gota's... No, there's two claymores in this army, so the Corsairs could all die. They could, that's true. D friendly fire is a thing. That could be a problem. But I'm not sure how much that's actually going to matter. Claymores coming in here should be able to get rid of the energy, and with that, that'll probably end up calling it. Oh, maybe not. The Claymores just killing themselves, as they do. But even then, drones got, no, drones really got great, this. Though. Drones got this. They were a lot sillier before. Yeah, another force of Darius coming just to finish off. Like, this is just all the straws to break the camel's back. That's all this is. Finish everything off. And that is game two. Drone taking point, pushing on to game three. Game two. <sighs> on to game three. Yeah, yeah we're, we're done game two. Now we're on to game three. And now it's going to be something else. I don't know. Probably a smaller map. Might maybe hide and seek. Else. Could what be Alien Desert again. Probably will be, honestly. Although, go to my thing to get an out micro drone and go for something really weird. <clears throat> I don't know. What are our options? Where's the alt tapping? I can't alt tap properly. All right, our options are Avalanche, Ice Coffee, Isle of Grief, Tangle Ismus, Into Battle, Rapids, Adamantine Mountain, Hide and Seek, Glaciers, Inculta, Alien Desert, Finn's Revenge, and Living Lands. So maybe Avalanche Cheese. I don't know. Seems like a possibility. At least to me. But we're down to the wires, is it? Last game for the tournament is going to be right now.
Okay, so we are, no, there's a bit of a discussion in the chat about whether or not to make the BO5. It is going to be BO3. So we, this is going to be the last map. Tournament points! As it goes. Unless you're picking a map. It's gold as map pick. I'm not sure what they're going to go for. Yeah, see, but... Drone likes to sort of A move. Not all of his forces, but many of the things. Yeah. Meaning they behave reasonably. Whereas God is trying to micro ships with big turn radiuses. Sort of not really favoring him. Yeah, I guess that's a good way of breaking down their styles. Because I mentioned before economy versus attrition, but it really just comes down to how much you go for the the A move or or fight move or whatever, rather than just straight move. But not sure how that's gonna work because well it depends on what they play next. Like, I'm really curious what they're thinking of doing. Like, they don't have a lot of really big macro maps. I mean, it's Finn's Revenge, kind of, but we've already seen how much C... Well, yeah, Finn's Revenge would be good for hovers. Gold has always been pretty good with hovers. That might be an option. People in the chat talking about double versus single. I actually worked out the times in the forum thread double versus single limb. It's pretty close, actually. Double limb has a bit more of a chance of going way over time, but it's not by much. Like in both cases, it's pr both BO3 single and BO3 double, it's about the same chance. Or sorry, BO3. Yeah, it was BO1 double limb that was consistently going to be shorter. Like even the worst possible time wasn't going to be that bad. And the average time was pretty much the same. Oh, we're going to be on Living Lands. Okay. Smaller map. Kind of makes sense. So, with Living Lands, we have what's likely to be a smaller, quicker map. Although, maybe just a matter of holding the center and then winning from that. So It's usually quicker. It's usually quicker, yeah. But sometimes people can grab the center and hold on to it and never let it go. And then it just takes forever. Well, I'll see what happens. <laughs> that being said, though, Gota does have a bit of an advantage on this just because of the fact that it's such a small map. It is not a macro map. As I found out to my own detriment, because I've been trying to play more macro-oriented recently, and yeah, it doesn't work. The way to beat Drone here is Drone tries to go macro, so he sends Constructor out exactly. to the rocks. So you send a Raider out to the rocks and kill his Constructor. Yep. But, well, tournament point might be determined by exactly that. Because, well, that's that's what we're doing. Okay. Gota going for jump bot right off the bat. Because, of course, it's Gota. It's jump bot. Not sure what Drone's going to be going for. Hmm. You really am not sure, because it's like, there's... What options would there be? I guess Drone could try to go for... With their style, maybe like shield and just push hard. There's lots of factories you can do here. Yeah, most of them really. I think. I think all of them are quite viable. I've seen a lot of vehicle and tank work out remarkably well. And that's the only one I could think of. The only problem with them is they can't get the center hill. But otherwise, they can go back. Oh, he's going spider. Ah, of course. I approve. Jump bot versus spider. The two weird terrain factories. But his Why constructor not? will be too expensive to send north and then lose. 
Oh, that's a fair point. Yeah, 200, well, 200 mil constructor versus a 200, oh, versus a 130 mil constructor. Yep, that's a thing to bear in mind. Looks like drone primarily trying to set up the fleas first. And the thing is, if drone sets up a good flea network, they won't have to worry about losing the weaver because they can just put the weaver up on the hill. Like, it can go as See, high as it wants should, to. Drone should be figuring out how to beat himself. Just send the raiders to that rock, kill the constable easily. Come on, send this, the fleas, can kill that constable. And it looks like they might be, I don't know. Well, they're, they're not the right moving, side. so... They're not doing so. No, they are now. There it is. Yeah, they waited a bit. Well, drone picked the right bad. side, that's for sure. And, I mean, the correct side as well as the right side. Yeah, the side and of the rock on it is not hard to find. Oh, right. I... Oh, fair point. I mean, there's constables the on both too. sides, but yeah. Where are Pyro? There are rocks on one do? side and trees on the other, so it's not it's not that hard. That's fair. What if he gets this one? He can that. jump. Yeah, but it Ooh. dies on impact. Yeah, but then Godus Commander, of course, is a Lotus. But hey, that's two that's 260 metal worth of builders that Goda doesn't get to use. Well, drones. Yeah, sort of reset. It. Yeah, nicely done. So at this point, drones in a reasonably good position, especially for a map they really didn't want to play. Go to getting some reclaim off. He's got himself two stuff. weavers though, which is a lot of weaver. I think they're thinking that because of the fact that they just knock drone back and, or sorry, knock go to back and probably set go to into a bit of a passive defensive position that drones just get away with building as many works as they want. I mean, one of the weavers is being used for, for the factory assist with the reclaim. That actually kind of makes sense. Like just turning all these rocks into fleas. And they're turning all those fleas into a terrifying force that will probably get burned to death by pyros. So maybe not that terrifying. In fact, I'm not quite sure what the fleas are seeking to accomplish at this point, seeing as the pyros are on the field. Yeah, the fleas can't do anything there. I mean, I guess it could kind of go around them. Pyros are heavy weight. The fleas could just bypass the pyros entirely and then go around the backside of the base, and then the lotus kills them. So still not a really good idea. I would kind of like to see a switch over to Redback right now. And there are the Redbacks, so we're good. We have a switch over to Redback. Okay, West if pointing out that... No... Oh. Those fleas could kill a Lotus easily. Maybe even two Constables and a Lotus. But the Pyre is the problem. Yeah. Although, West pointing out that if the flea ambushes the Pyre, the flea could surround it and kill it. That's ah, a yes. fair point. It does that. That is an option. I don't know how likely an option it is, but it is something that could happen. Not right now, though. This is not that situation. Drone sent his red backs out of position. Ooh, oh, yeah. But at the same time, though, there are enough fleas to get rid of the pyros. Well, one of the pyros, the other pyro. One of the pyros. I think it still may cost. I think you're right, because I was at 20 fleas. There was quite a few no, fleas. No, not quite. No, 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 no. It actually, the pyro did make cost. A lot of fleas there. Yeah, there was about 400 metal worth of fleas in that army, so 220 metal Drone's versus 400 metal. Drone's red got out of position a bit. They did, but they're not. They're more just not really helping the fleas. It's the main problem here is that Gold is able to expand. Gold is back on the board, really. That's the issue. Yeah. And the Redback's going in for the southeast expansion, that, or the eastern expansion. That could still be an issue. That's a major problem. That'll be cleared out. Yeah, this this constable's dead. Well, maybe not. It's faster than the Redback. Okay, but well, the expansions are dead. Metal extractors are stationary. There's not a whole lot they can do. And drone going for the fairly typical artillery position, setting a bunch of defenses over to the, over by the center hill. Although I think Gold is in a reasonable spot to deal with that. Like the pyros can't really just rush in, but I don't know. Gold's economy is not doing too terrible. Drone, is doing Jack drone switched into recluse just as I thought he should. It's sort ah, of there's... time to preemptively counter things like placeholder and moderator. That is a good idea. Of course, at this point, it's pure Pyro, and honestly, I'm not sure why. The Redbacks will basically be an even fighting as the Pyros. The Redbacks might even kill this jump bot factory. They might. The Constables are going to try to help, but there's nothing being built out of it. Not really sure what Golda is See, planning right now. Those Playing fleas with... may cost to get us that turret, I think. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Not If they hadn't been killed by the death explosions, they would have been fine. Yes. Eight fleas died. Yeah, well, 160 Which, metal. Eh, not quite mid-cost. Well, it's good against the turret plus the mechs. 
Right. Good against turn plus mechs. If they hadn't been killed at death explosions, it would have been like four oh, or five dead. Oh, that's surprise pyros. Ooh. Five pyros over to the south side of the map. Or east western side of the map. Getting rid of a couple metal extractors. Probably getting rid of the weaver. Could kill the base. Drone has no what? weavers. Oh, yeah. He's just getting one. Well, there's the Lotus, but there's five pyros. They should... One of the pyros might die. Yeah, this this weakened pyro might die. But Drone's doing... A, or Goda's doing a pretty good job microing it away. Oh, okay, this might be it. There's a counterattack with the Redbacks coming in, but they're not able to do much. They're stopping the pyros, but that's fine. That's just defense. Gorda should be able to get rid of this. Drone throwing in the towel as it is. That is... Or at least is he? They said no, no, G no, well, that they said GG. someone else. No, Drone oh, said, said GG. Oh, you're right, he did. In. I mean, that... Spectator chat. Oh, right. That might actually not be a proper GG. I think Drone might be holding on to the center. I, it looks like Drone's going, oh, maybe, I can, maybe I can take the center. Maybe I can rebuild something. Have a thing. Stay in the tournament a little bit longer. Don't get silver. But, no, I think uh, that's it. No, nah. that's it. Drone throws in the towel. Gota takes it with a nice, sneaky pyro assault over the western side of the map. Going in the back yeah, and right wiping out Drone's always, base. Always terrible because of the hills. You can get yeah, sneaked up on like that. Yeah, it's something that Drone really couldn't do much about. I mean, they, they could put radar on one of the mountains and such, but it would have been too late even. So, yeah, good job, Gota. Congratulations, Gota takes it. Drone takes second place. Does that put Gota in the Space Lobster ranking? I'm not sure that's... I don't think so. Okay. Vaguely curious about that, but I, I don't know. Nah, he's 80% to ranked. Space Lobster. Does that update immediately? Probably not. Well, anyway, good job, our 80% Space Lobster Gota. Taking first place. Second place goes over to Drone. Third place is Anarchid. Fourth place, Steel Blue. And overall, very strong tournament. I mean, like you said before, Google Frog, this is a tournament of very even matches. A lot of people playing that were just able to able to get two ones, upsets, all over the place. This is a very, very interesting yeah, tournament. Yeah, it was good. I mean, uh, aided by some people being stronger at sea and some other people being less strong at sea. Yeah. But on the other hand, this is actually kind of interesting because... But it was a good map, this, map. Yeah, and this was a good map. but also the tournament was built around having a very specific set of maps. It wasn't just a matter of, here's all the maps, pick some. It's like, no, this is yes. a map for the first match, second match, third match. Pick out of these sets. Those are your options. And that, yeah, that led a to a lot of really it. interesting games. Yeah, I agree, because it led to a lot of interesting games. Made sure that the last match wasn't going to be Hop and Catcher or something really long. And... You ended up having a lot of interesting games where you had Aurelian be played because, well, it's in the pool. But, I mean, people could have picked any other map. There's a dozen maps in the pool, but still it was there. And we saw other maps played as well. Overall, it was just an interesting set of maps that we got to see just come out of there. But I like that. Good job, Shaman. I really enjoyed that. And thanks again, Shaman, for hosting the tournament. Thank you, Google Frog, for helping me cast. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to everyone who signed up for playing. This is the biggest tournament we've had all year. Actually, for the last couple of years. This is... 17 people participating. Is possibly. That is I quite think, a few. Yeah, it's the biggest tournament we've had in a long time. So, thanks again, everyone who participated, who watched, who helped organize, and again, Google Frog for helping me cast here. And that is going to be it. So, thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.